So this video is going to help introduce the concept of trig identities um, for my pre-cal and actually IB classes also. Um, so I created this um, puzzle back when I was in college um, as a way to introduce trig identities. Um, and so what it does is you, um, what you are required to do is you're going to change only one letter at a time. Um, and every every line still needs to be a word. So, um, and I tell my kids in class that you use dictionary.com as your litmus test. Um, that if the word is in dictionary.com, then you're um, then you're good to go. So we um, we like to joke about we turn a boy into a man. We go poker hands. Yes, I did that on purpose. Um, actually, I think I found them online years ago. Um, and then it's Easter that becomes basket, and then Pinto becomes beans. So let me show you what I mean with a, this boy to man, um, and then. I would encourage you to take to stop the video and to practice the others and then keep watching. Um, so, for example, we may say boy to bay. Um, I just changed one letter, but it's still a word. To, from, to may to man. Okay, and I've seen other, other examples. Boy to, um, what else have I seen? Um, Boy, that, that's a quick way. Boy, to, well, so from bay um, to ban to man. So different things like that. You've got different options. You can take longer or shorter. Like on this one, I had a bunch of boxes. You didn't need all of them. Um, have, some, have some fun with that. It's just fun and silly. Um, but the, the reason that I have you do that is because what you're doing is you are, you're moving from one place to another and with one step at a time, only changing one thing. It has, and it still has to be a real word. Word, excuse me. I'm a little tired this morning. Um, so we use this when we start. We use a similar concept when we start proving trig identities, where you can do one thing at a time. It needs to be very clear. It needs to be good math the whole way down. Um, before we prove a few, which is on the back of your worksheet, uh, before we prove a few, I want to remind you some of the identities. Um, and introduce a new one for you. Um, hopefully you remember that um, some of our reciprocal, um, our reciprocal identities, and that deals with um, a cosecant of theta or x or whatever is one over sine. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Don't lose your variable. Um, that will lose you points pretty quick. Secant is one over cosine, uh, cotangent, is 1 over tangent. Likewise, we can say sine is equal to 1 over cosecant. This um, should be a review for you at this point. OK, they also talk about the quotient identities. Let's see if I can spell. Could go either way. Um, and that would be the tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine and that cotangent of theta is equal to cosine over sine. Okay, those I expect that you already know. Then there's um, a few that we would refer to as the Pythagorean. And these may be new, um, but one of these is so very important. There was a teacher that used to work here who was legendary, and I will never aspire to be as cool as she is. Um, but she would call one of the Pythagorean identities. She'd call it the Big Daddy. And now my kids always laugh when I say it, and then they get a little they get a little embarrassed by calling this particular identity the Big Daddy. But um, a few days into this unit, a few um, all of a sudden I hear them all saying, "Oh yeah, you got to use the Big Daddy. Oh, you got to use the Big Daddy." So mock me all you want, but you will use it. Um, okay, and so what that one, we're going to, I'll save this paper for a second. If you come back, if you remember our unit circle, remember it never goes away, um, we have a radius of 1, and then the x value is cosine of, your, of theta, say this is theta, and then the y value is sine of theta. Well, this is called the Pythagorean identity because you can use Pythagorean theorem. Well, and I can say this, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, sine of theta squared plus cosine of theta squared is equal to 1 squared. Um, obviously, that's 1. Mathematicians are inherently lazy, I mean efficient. Um, and what we, we want to write as little as possible. Um, but let me make a, a, a point out a difference here. Sine of theta squared. What this is saying is this is saying take an angle, square it, then take the sine. That's not, we, 
I can't think of any time we do that in pre-cal. So never, never, never write it this way. So you could, you could have the parentheses. We're taking sine of theta and we're squaring it. But since we are inherently lazy, I mean efficient, we will say sine squared of theta to mean the same thing right here. Okay, so this is saying take sine of theta, get an answer, then square it. Um, but rather than write out all these parentheses, we just, we just write it this way. So our Pythagorean identity is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And that one is so important, we call it the Big Daddy. And that is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Um, sometimes it's helpful to solve for either sine squared or cosine squared. So I may say, okay, sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. Or I could solve for cosine squared and say cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Um, and these, so basically, I would strongly encourage you, I mean, you can't not know this. Does that make sense? That is so important. That's the big daddy. Um, everything comes from that. Um, but whether or not you have these other two memorized is, is your choice. This one, there's no getting out of it. you got to know it. These two you could easily generate from the first one. Okay, the next, there's a few more Pythagorean identities, and I like to generate them all from the Big Daddy. Okay, so we can take sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, and I'm going to divide through, I'm going to divide everybody through by cosine squared. Which is a legitimate thing to do. That's that's not a problem. I, I'm just dividing everybody. I'm multiplying the whole equation by 1 over cosine squared. If you remember, hopefully you do, sine over cosine is tangent. So sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine squared over cosine squared is 1. And then 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. Okay, so this is another one. Um, it's in the Big Daddy family. Let's write it in this color. What did we just say? Um... Tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And likewise, notice we had this. This is a, the big data that's so important. We came up with these other two by subtracting. I can do a, same, a similar thing here and say that tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. You'll see that sometimes. And then I could say 1 is equal to, well, secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta. Okay. Um, maybe you can guess that if I took the Big Daddy and divided it by cosine squared, I can also take the Big Daddy and divide by sine squared. Okay, sine squared plus over sine squared is 1, this is cotangent squared, and this is cosecant squared. So here is another Pythagorean identity. 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Um, so here's what I encourage you to do. Well, okay, let's subtract like we did on the other ones. 1 would equal cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. Cotangent squared theta would equal cosecant squared theta minus 1. Um, what I, you have to, have to, have to know how to get this one. You have to know it. There's just no way around it. Um, if you have to draw the unit circle again to remember, uh, more power to you. But eventually this will be stuck in your little heads. The other two you can generate by dividing by, this one was cosine squared, this one was sine squared. Um, and then you can subtract away. So you can think of it as being there being nine identities. But really it all comes down to knowing this most important one. So important, we call it the Big Daddy. Um, okay, the... Let me also point out that this does not mean sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. This does not mean that sine theta plus cosine theta equals 1. Okay, absolutely not. You cannot do that. Um, you'd have to take the square root of the whole side and the square root of the whole side. Um, and this, if you think, um, let's think about numbers. If I say 9 plus, the square root of 9 plus 16. Well, this is equal to the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. If I tried to say, well, what's the square root of 9 plus the square root of 16? Well, that's 3 plus 4, which is surely not 5. That is 7. Okay, so be careful, be careful, be careful. If you say this, I'm, I'm going to know that you did not watch my video, <laughs> which you should be watching. Okay, so let's actually do a problem. So they say prove the following, identity, uh, following trick identities. And the way that we do these is we start on one side and we stay on it the whole time. 
Um, and we want to step by step by step. Remember, we were talking about that. Uh, <laughs> we turned a boy to a man. So we did one step by step by step uh, the whole way down. So we're going to pick one side. We're going to do step by step by step to get to the other side. Um, so I look at this, and I can pick either side to begin on. And I, I notice that there's more stuff happening over here. Okay, so the first thing I might say is, well, that's equal to sine of theta times, well, secant is 1 over cosine. Well, that's just sine of theta over cosine of theta. Well, sine over cosine is just tangent. And I like to put a little check mark at the end of it when I've gotten, I've worked one side all the way down to equal the other. Sometimes I'll see people that, uh, or some teachers will insist that they write the other side all the way down. And then you get to where this equals that. Um, I don't always care that much, but you have to have it very clear what is happening. Um, this is not so much about the final answer. This is about the process getting to it. Um, and so the way that you write it up matters. Um, okay, so let's look at, we'll do uh, a couple more. On this one, I have secant squared is equal to sine squared plus cosine squared over cosine squared. Um, the, a few options. Okay, so notice there's more happening on the right side, so I'm going to start there. One thing I can do is I can split up my fraction. And this becomes tangent squared theta plus 1. And if you remember, tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. So you can just tell me, OK, that's secant squared theta. That's not the easiest way to do that problem, though, but it would get you full credit. Um, you could also recognize from here that this is the big daddy on the top. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1 over um, cosine squared theta. Well, 1 over cosine squared theta is secant squared theta. And you're done. Oh, that one, you're done too. OK? Um, a lot of this, there's, there's multiple ways to do these problems. And sometimes you see the short, shortest way to get there. Sometimes you don't. Um, the only way to learn these is through practice. OK, hopefully watching my video gives you a, a good start. But if you don't practice, you're kind of in trouble. Um, this one, I might need more space. Um, OK, secant of theta over cosine of theta. There's my space. Um, minus tangent of theta over cotangent of theta. OK, so there's a few things that we can try. One of our one strategy is to write everybody in terms of sine and cosine. The other thing is I notice, which could be a legitimate way to do this problem. The other thing I notice is that secant and cosine are, um, are reciprocal identities. So I might say, well, this is secant of theta times, obviously, I'm going to start on the left side, because the what do you want to do with 1? Who knows? Um, this is secant of theta times cosine of theta minus tangent of theta times 1 over cotangent of theta. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, I've done this problem probably five or six different ways. Each year, I think through it a different way. But this is secant of theta times, well, secant of theta minus tangent of theta times 1 over cotangent is tangent of theta. OK, so we're secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta. And when you come back to your Pythagorean identities, secant squared, there, can you see it? Secant squared of theta minus tangent squared of theta is equal to 1. So I can just say 1. Well, it's equal to 1, and I'm done. OK. Um, I have two more on this worksheet. Go ahead and, and take notes on these. You know, make, make sure you kind of follow what we're doing. Um, let's look at this next one. So the, this one, I might be inclined to put everybody in terms of sine and cosine. So secant is 1 over cosine theta minus sine of theta over cosine theta times sine of theta equal to cosine theta. Oh, well, sorry. I didn't have to write that. There's something wrong with writing it, but I didn't have to. Um, and notice this, I have a common denominator. This becomes 1 minus, well, sine times sine is sine squared. And da, 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 I see the big daddy. Well, I see 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared theta over cosine. Well, cosine squared divided by cosine is just cosine. And that's equal to cosine. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see my work. And we're done. The very last one for today, um, if this is the last one you ever do, uh, life will be rough. <laughs> okay, so on this one, um, I see 1 minus tangent squared over 1 plus tangent squared. Um, 
few options on this. One thing um, I want to encourage you or remind you, you can split the numerator of a fraction. So like if I have a plus b over c, I can say that that's a over c plus b over c. Um, but I can't split the denominator. If I have a over b plus c and you try and split it, uh, that's just wrong. So think about it this way. Um, uh, say 2 over 3 plus 4. Well, that's equal to 2 sevenths. But 2 thirds plus 2 fourths is not equal to 2 sevenths. This is um, 1 half plus... Anyway, you have to get a common denominator to add your fractions. Those are not the same. Um, already, this one of them is bigger than that. Okay, anyway. Um, so what we're looking at here, when I see 1 plus tangent squared, I remember that tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. That's in the Big Daddy. So I can say this. Okay, and now I might, I've got, I've got options. I might break my fraction apart. I might write everybody in terms of sine and cosine. Um, let's try, let's try that. Um, this becomes 1 minus tangent squared. Oh, I lied. I was going to break write it in terms of sine and cosine. Um, do I have more paper? I do have more paper. Okay. Um, so this becomes 1 minus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta divided by 1 over cosine squared theta. Okay, make sure you, you indicate the what the big, like I make a big line here so that I can see that this, um, that's still the denominator of everything. Um, and so what I'm, another way to think of this, this step is optional if you choose to write it, but this is 1 minus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta that's being divided by 1 over cosine squared theta. You don't have to write this step, but you can. Um, which is like saying, when we divide fractions, that's the th same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, and so now I can distribute through. I have cosine squared theta minus, well, and the cosines are going to cancel right here, minus sine squared theta. At this point, I'm, I'm just plugging along, and I forgot where I'm trying to get. Okay, so when I look back at the problem, I have 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Well, I've got a cosine squared theta. But I see that I've got this sine squared theta, and if you remember, sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So this becomes cosine squared theta minus 1 minus cosine squared theta. And it should have equal signs. Okay, whatever. Um, I distribute through cosine squared theta minus 1 plus cosine squared theta. And there's one cosine squared theta and another cosine squared theta. Add them together, you get two cosine squared theta minus one, and that was equal to two cosine squared theta minus one, and we're done. Enjoy! You have to, have to, have to, have to, have to practice these.